Hey you guys, someone asked me a question about working with container fields, so I thought I would make a little bit of a lesson. Let's say you have a little database, it's very 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 simple, let's go to file manage database. I've got a few fields here and I'm going to add a container field and I'm going to call this one image. And the type is going to be container. And what you do with the container field, uh, let's create this one, what you do with it is you can put images and stuff like that in it. It can contain a uh, stuff. So let's put our container field here. Let's say that I want the image. I don't need a label and let's make it a little bit bigger. All right, cool. This is our uh, container field. And what I can do now is I can insert a picture and I can go to my content here, my portraits, and I've got Sue. There we go. Sue is in here now. Um, so that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is you could just take your pictures here and you could just drag a picture in here. And, and that is a, a cool way to add images. Now when you're adding an image, uh, for instance this is Cindy, what you can do here, you have a little checkbox here and it allows you to store only a reference to the file. So basically what that does is what you're doing right now is when you insert this image, you're inserting the image actually inside the FileMaker file. So if you do that, um, let's have a look here. Our uh, FileMaker file is only 209 kilobytes now, but if I close this one, it'll save and now it all of a sudden becomes 1.6 megabytes. And that's because I'm storing those images inside my FileMaker file. Now, this is pretty handy when you want to have a, a completely self-contained FileMaker file that you can easily move from one computer to another and you want to have those files stored within, then that is handy. But this could also be kind of a disadvantage because this makes the file very large and sometimes it's easier to have your images outside of your file so you can more easily create backups of your FileMaker file without having to copy all of the image content that is inside. So in order to do that, what you could do is you could either insert a picture and only store a reference to the file. But if you've got files from all kinds of directions uh, and all kinds of locations, then you might, uh, then this might get messed up if you move those things around. Those uh, links could be broken. But there is another way to go about doing this. Now our Sandy isn't in here yet. Let's put our Sandy in here. There we go. What we can do is we can um, have a little mix of both. We can kind of save them. Uh, within a file structure that we create no matter where they come from and then we always have them like in a specific folder and we can also easily access them and that is called uh, storing our container fields externally if we go to file manage we've got containers right here and in this containers uh, situation here we can add uh, new directories like for instance I could make a new one and I could say pictures and then a slash. So that's what it says here. You can have a directory name followed by a slash. And then when we do that, we've got a new like uh, external uh, storage location for our container. So now we can uh, see I've already made, and let's simplify this, I've already made my little folder here, but it's empty. Uh, but what it's got is um, we've got the ability now to store all our pictures inside here. So let's go and set this up. Let's go to file manage. Uh, database. Let's go to our fields and our image container fields. Let's double click and let's go to the storage settings. Now here I can uh, choose to store my container data externally and I can do that relative to uh, the pictures right here and then if I want I can choose either secure storage or open storage in this case I've got simple pictures and I would find it kind of handy if I can still access them later on so I'm going to use open storage and what I could do is I could for instance choose to say I would like the full name to be used as like the directory where those pictures are stored so let's try this out and see what it does let's hit OK and then um, the storage options have changed do you want to transfer the data? Yes, let's transfer the data. And then uh, four have been transferred, so let's hit OK. And then let's have a look here. So I've got all of my uh, folders here now that all have a little image inside. And this way what I've gotten here is um, I've got all of my um, different um, persons and they've all been uh, stored inside a little folder there. So this last one here, Sandrine, let's insert the file. 
or no, let's insert the picture, sorry, insert picture. Let's add our Sandrine, and as you can see here, a new folder is created, Sandrine uh, Thomas, this one, and that picture goes in there. So this is a very handy way to, um, let's go up here. So we have our FileMaker file, and this is just some stuff that I'm working with, uh, the images that I want to put in there. And these are like my stored pictures. So now if I would uh, keep these two folders, uh, or these two files, this file and this folder, if I keep them together like this, I will always have those pictures. And if I, uh, let's close this and let's see what happens. My, uh, just my FileMaker file itself returns to 229 kilobytes. So it's a very small file size. I can easily duplicate this and all my pictures are stored uh, like externally. So that way I can uh, very easily make uh, backups of my FileMaker file and not have to make, uh, not, have to, not have to use so much of file space. File space. So, um, okay, what else can we do with a, um, with these container fields? I could, for instance, insert a file as well. And let's see what we've got. We've got like a little PDF file here. Let's try this one. Let's insert this PDF. And PDF. Okay, cool. Um, and so what I can do is, Um, I can uh, maybe uh, make a new record and I can do test music and I can add a music file, so insert file and then I've got some music file here as well. Okay, but as you can see both with the PDF and with the music file, there is uh, no real ability to do anything with that. So what you can do is you can uh, save this stuff again. You can right click and do export field contents and this allows you to save this PDF somewhere uh, But it's not so handy because you can't really see it and with the music you can't really do anything But if you go into your settings here Under the data tab in your inspector what you can do is you can uh, kind of browse down and say that I would like um, my um, Container to have interactive content and if we try that out, what we can see is that um, still nothing has changed. But if I right click on it now, oops, let's see if this one, oh yeah, like this, exit layout. Cool. Now I've got these other options. I've got an option to insert a PDF, and this is an option that I didn't have before. So let's insert a PDF again. Let's uh, try this one. Boom. And now it's a little bit, little bit small here, but I can now see my uh, PDF directly inside my um, container field here. And if I insert an audio or video in this one instead of a file, I can go to my music here and I can choose this and then it automatically gives me a, an ability to play my music. So that's kind of a handy um, way to work with containers depending on the stuff that you're going to put in there and also my pictures are still working in here as well okay so like I said before you can insert stuff in here and you can export stuff as well now if you want you could also um, automate this a little bit because if you're just going to give this file to a user and they arrive here they might not really know what to do with this so um, you might want to give them some help by creating a little button that allows them to insert a picture for instance um, and uh, in order for this to work what we're going to do is we're going to create a little script we're going to create a new script it's called insert picture and you need a few steps like a go to field step and then let's uh, target the image which is our container field and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do insert and um, then we can kind of choose we have insert audio video we've got insert we've got all kinds of insert insert PDF insert picture we're gonna do insert picture in this case because it's an image and then we're going to specify we're not going to specify the source file okay so that is uh, up to the user and then let's do a commit records requests in the end just to kind of store that picture okay let's save this and see what this does 
Let's go to our button setup and let's tell our button to perform a script, the insert picture script, and let's change the cursor to a hand when we hover over this button. Okay, when I make a button, I usually like to give it a little bit of a color. And let's say that I would like the, that is to be a green, sure. So let's try this out, insert picture, and yes, this looks like it's working. Let's, I can, I can choose whichever I want. And I got one here uh, that I've inserted in here. Now, um, what if I want to like save this picture and I want my user to uh, I'll save it? I can make a new button. So I'm just going to copy this one so that I have the, another one the same size. Save picture or export picture is as good as well. And then I'm going to need a new script. And I'm going to uh, do it like this. And it's kind of the same. It's a go to field. I don't know if we need that one. It's export field contents. Let's see what the settings are in this one. Oh, I can actually specify a target field here. So I don't really have to do a go to field. So let's specify the image field as my target. Let's delete this. And then let's see what else do we have. I'm not going to specify the output file because um, yeah, there's no point in doing that. So let's try this out and see if it works. Let's save this one. Let's say button set up and I want to perform another script. I want to do my save picture script and I'm going to want to have, uh, let this one have a different color there. So let's click save picture and there let's go on my desktop and save it. And there, uh, here you go on my desktop, a new uh, picture has just shown up. Uh, this one right here shown up on my desktop. So that works. And that makes it kind of easy um, for me to um, to um, make it a little bit easier for my user. But also, um, if I know that I've got a situation where uh, not pictures but PDFs are going to be inserted, then I can just change my script. And instead of an insert picture, I could use an insert PDF. There. So then I could use that kind of, and that kind of uh, differ, uh, makes for a different kind of a file type that's going to be entered there. Okay, in this case, I'll just leave it at picture. And uh, now I can put the pictures in there and I can save a picture. Of course, if I insert a new picture now, um, where did it go? Somewhere here. If I insert another picture, of course, the picture that was in there is going to be overwritten. And a uh, another thing you could add is maybe a remove picture, because the thing is you can remove a picture by just entering this one and uh, hitting a delete key. Uh, that way you could, uh, whoops, you can delete a picture, but uh, maybe that's a little tricky and your user, your user doesn't know that. So what you could do is just uh, have a remove picture script and that is a very simple one let's do remove picture and I guess you've got multiple options but I like to do a set field there is also a clear script but I don't like to use that and I'm just going to enter uh, two quotation marks with nothing in between them and then, then I'm going to do a commit records requests with the dialog off okay let's save that and then let's um, update our script that we are running. Let's do remove picture. Cool. And let's make this one an appropriate red. Okay, so let's insert a picture in here, whichever one is fine. And then let's remove and there it goes away. So this is an easy way to use buttons to uh, make it easier for your user. Okay, let's take this a step further. What else could we do? Um, let's go into file manage layouts. Let's duplicate our layout here layout contacts um, portal cool so let's go to that one okay I'm going to remove this whole bit and I'm gonna say what if I have uh, multiple uh, images that I would like to store for a specific contact I actually could have left that original container field on here because that did contain an image that we might uh, end up keeping. Okay, let's go back to one where there is a pretty picture. Okay, what if we want to store multiple pictures or documents or uh, music files or whatever uh, for a certain uh, user? Then we could um, 
make a related uh, table for uh, documents. We could make a new table called documents and we could say that it has an ID which is a number field set to auto enter a serial number. Then it needs to be related to the contact so a contact IDFK would be handy. Then I would need some sort of a description whoa which could be a text field and I need to have a container field for which needs to be set to the type of container obviously uh, to store my uh, whichever document I'm gonna be making so let's look at the relationships here we've got our contacts and we've got our documents let's give them a color in case we start duplicating them later on I've got my contact ID related to my contact ID FK and I'm gonna give this one the ability to allow the creation of documents when I am on the a contact and if I delete a contact I want to delete those related documents as well okay so if we do that what we can do is we can add a portal to this layout and I'm gonna make one that's a little bit narrow and you'll see why uh, uh, in a second so let's say documents uh, I don't need to sort I don't need to filter I want to delete I want to scroll uh, let's do that one as well and then I'm gonna do the description and the container pretty cool Okay, so um, what I don't like is that I've always got these um, these fields without borders. So I'm going to set this one to default and this one as well. That way they at least have borders around them so you can see where they end. And now the reason I kept it very narrow is because this only gives me three uh, portal rows, which I like. I'm going to delete this footer part because I don't need it and I make this one a bit bigger make it iPad size and now if I just make my portal a little bit bigger then I still only have three rows but I got more room in each and every single row let's make this bigger okay cool so now what I can do is I could say um, I'm gonna enter a document and then I can well insert whatever I want um, I want to put a document in there so let's go to here let's go to there I'm make this an interactive uh, content for PDF and mp3 etc if I exit my layout and I want to insert a PDF I'm gonna notice that that doesn't work I can't insert I could enter insert a picture well, let's try that out yeah cool that works but the interactive part it doesn't work I can insert a file um, and I could insert like a PDF file but that doesn't show up again and that's kind of annoying because I made before I made this interactive uh, container here and that does work but for this one it doesn't work and the reason that this doesn't work is, is because it is inside a um, portal that's why it doesn't work now you can just as easily you can use this portal and store stuff inside and then you can uh, export field contents to put this um, to save this somewhere uh, but you can't preview it and you can't play I think you can't play the music uh, as well let's do an insert file here for a music file uh, I think it's not gonna play no it's just gonna show up like this and um, that's kind of the drawback of putting these um, putting these containers in a portal is that inside a portal that interactive content does not work which is kind of a bummer because um, because that would be kind of cool however at the same time if you would put a PDF in there you, you would not really be able to read it anyway so maybe that's the reason it doesn't work I don't really know why they made it so that it doesn't work okay so um, how could we solve this problem because of course this is kind of annoying um, uh, I would like to see a solution for this problem I'm just gonna quickly add this one and I'm gonna say that this needs to have a single step uh, delete portal row cool that way I can delete stuff if I need to okay so how could I solve this kind of a problem what I can do is I can take my container and put it outside of the portal and then I can um, then I can make it interactive which is kinda cool and then I can put in my document as a PDF and I could just say um, nope that's not there and then I could just go here all the way here oops um, content PDF and I have my PDF 
and have it readable in there. So, but how do I now, what, I, what if I'm dealing with multiple, um, multiple documents and I just want to see one, one particular document, how do I see the second one, etc, etc. This is kind of um, not ideal. But the cool thing about this is if I put this container outside, I can make it big, but now I, just, I need to find a way to select a specific um, document. So what am I going to do now that this one has been removed from here anyway? I'm going to just make this a bit smaller. Let's not make it too small. Okay. And then this can be made smaller as well. So the only thing I need right now is some sort of a way to select um, this thing here. I'm going to make a select button. Cool. And then let's make this one. Let's give this one a color, shall we? Okay, cool. That's nice. I always like to make my button the same height as my field, and my field is going to be 21 points high. And I know these buttons are usually 22 points high. So there. Then we can nicely align this. Let's put this one here. Okay, cool. I've got my little list here. I can put in documents and music whatever I want. Okay, so now I need a way to select um, whichever one and then to be able to see the content of that one on here. Um, so what I need for that first is a field in my contacts uh, because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be storing the ID of the selected document in my contacts table. So I need a field for that in my context table and I'm going to call this one um, selected document ID. I'm going to make that a number field. There you go. Cool. And then it's pretty easy. I know what my button then needs to do. It just needs to put the ID of the document I select in that field. And that's actually just to to be able to see what's going on, let's put that field here. Select a document ID. Cool. It's a bit big, but yeah. Cool. So let's put that in there just to see what's going on. Okay, we need a button for this. And we're gonna uh, a script for this, and we're gonna call this one select a document. And it's gonna be very simple, a simple set field where we are going to set a target field that is going to be our selected document ID and we're going to set that with our document ID so the ID of the document we have selected okay that's cool and then when we do that let's do a um, commit records request with the dialog off so that we definitely save the value that we've just kind of uh, put into that field there. Okay, so let's go to my button setup and let's say that I would like it when I click this button, I would like to perform the script of select a document and I would like my cursor to change to a hand when I hover over that button. So let's try this out. Okay, I can see that a value does show up here when I select this document and when I select the music, then that changes. So that's kind of cool. That's kind of working. The only um, thing that maybe uh, let's see if this is annoying. Yeah, okay, this is kind of annoying because I have a select button here, but there's nothing in here um, for me to select. So, so what I could do is I could select this button, I could go to Bryce and I could say hide object when my documents ID is empty. So I'm going to do first of all is empty documents ID. That's the way I should do it. Okay, and if I do that, then, and I can actually make my portal a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. Then what happens is I do have the ability to add a new document, but I can't select it yet, which is kind of cool. And as soon as I enter something in here, document two, then I do have the ability to select it, which is kind of cool. Um, okay, so now there is a bit of a problem there. I can't see which one is selected because I, I, I don't really want to see this on my layout later on. I'm going to want to remove this. But then I can't see which one I have selected. So I can use some conditional formatting to make that a little bit easier. And conditional formatting is very simple. I want to compare the value that is... 
I'm going to specify here, I want to compare the value that is in my selected document ID, and that needs to be the same as my document ID, obviously, because that document ID is going in that field. And when those two values are the same, then I would like to see a fill color of light green show up so that I can see that that one is selected. So now, whichever one I click, it turns green and that is the document that is selected. Okay, that's all good, but this one isn't updating yet. So now let's see how we need to figure that out. File Manage Database. So what we have is for our contact, we can have multiple different documents, but our selected document ID is in this field. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna hit those two green plus signs, um, which is going to duplicate the selected object on my documents or what I can also do on my Mac is alt drag this one down and I can say documents underscore selected there you go now if I uh, com connect the selected document ID with the ID here then whichever document I have selected will be visible in this um, uh, table occurrence. This is not a new table, there are still only two tables, but for the documents we now have two occurrences of that one table. So now if I update this one, I do double click it, and I show this field not from the documents uh, table occurrence, but from the documents selected table occurrence, then when I click here, this updates. See, so I have a document, this one it now says invoice, but actually I want to insert an audio or video in there because that says music. So I can go to my music here and I can enter a music file and there we go. My music is in there, pretty cool. So um, this way you can still have these like interactive, um, these interactive type um, of containers. Uh, and, and, and also still kind of use a portal, uh, so that's kind of cool. Um, the only thing you do need to pay attention to is when you enter, for instance, something new, like a new music, uh, you cannot just then go in here and try to like insert uh, music or something like that, because you do have to first select this one. And you, we, maybe what we could do is we could trigger um, something like this if we put a script trigger on here set script trigger, let's do an on object save or an on object exit we can select document if we run that script then what happens is as soon as I enter something new in here let's do music 2 as soon as I go out like by hitting the tab key that one becomes selected and then I can just easily insert something in here and then I can of course uh, know that it is in the correct position Okay, so, um, and of course with this stuff you can also add all those buttons that I had before uh, to insert and export and do all of that stuff. Um, I had not yet set these up to store externally, but you can of course go and do that as well like I did before. You get a file manage and then containers. You have your, um, you can make a new one for documents if you want to. Documents slash and then you can go into your file manage I don't I first have to make that folder then um, documents okay cool and then you can kind of go to file manage database and then uh, we'll have to be a bit careful with documents container um, let's say we go to storage we store the data externally we go to documents and then we can have open storage and we could specify maybe that we want to use the uh, contacts and then we use the full name let's see if that works okay now FileMaker wants to transfer my files and it has transferred three files let's go and look into my documents folder and I can see that for this uh, particular contact so student I happen to have these like four documents here um, that I've got stored in uh, under her shall I say her uh, uh, record so that's a kind of cool way to keep all your uh, data kind of stored and safe and of course with this one as well this is now nine and a half megabytes until I close it and then it updates and it becomes 285 kilobytes again so now I have my um, 
my FileMaker file that's very small and all of my documents and pictures of my contacts are all nicely stored in these uh, external uh, little folders right there. So I think that that's a pretty uh, good way and gives you a lot of options of dealing with container uh, fields. So I hope you guys learned something. Ciao! If you guys want to learn a ton more about FileMaker, you can head over to my Udemy page where I've got a bunch of entire FileMaker courses online. You can follow them and basically we make entire FileMaker systems from scratch and I'll take you uh, on the entire process step by step. There is even one that is uh, completely free, so you can just follow that free of charge and that is a beginner tutorial where we make an entire contacts database. Um, that's a really fun one that you can follow that can teach you the basics of FileMaker. So head over there by following the links in the description and I'll see you guys there.